In module 8, we had a setup between LG Television and PS3. We were able to get the power light, the link light and 3D light on. We were able to set up the glasses and the emitter, everything was working. And what we needed to do is then to go in and do the fine tuning. Module 9, the very first thing we'll do is we'll do a setup with the preset settings on a 120 hertz display. And that will do it with the help of a 3D Blu-ray player and a ViewSonic 120 hertz projector. Now, I know I have a 120 hertz projector. This is ViewSonic. And I can see an image on the screen, which is a 3D image. And the reason why I know this is a th um, 120 hertz projector is because both of my dip switches are in the up position. More importantly, dip switch number one is in the up position. So that's why I know that this particular projector truly accepts 120 hertz input. Now, if I were to take the dip switch number one and put it in the down position, I will still see a 3D image. It will operate at 60 hertz. Most projectors of televisions um, that go beyond 60 hertz and can go to 120 hertz will also lock in at 60 hertz. But if you happen to have a 120 hertz projector, there's no reason whatsoever to go to 60 hertz and view or operate it at 60 hertz. So we know this is a 120 hertz DLP projector and therefore we're going to operate and set it up to the right settings at 120 hertz. So the emitter is right here, signal's going through, the picture's right in front of me, everything's looking good. Mind you, if you were to come across a situation where everything was working or at a certain moment, because you changed the contents or because you unplugged or plugged and you no longer are able to see the image, it's best to then restart your player. Because if you do restart the player, then you will get a fresh signal going through the processor and onto the display and you should be able to see the image. Uh, in some cases you might be able to need to take, eject the DVD that you have in the player out and put it back in and start. There's no harm in trying multiple things including taking the power cable out of the processor and plugging it back in. It's just to give it a refresh and that will work. So here we are. I imagine you can very clearly see the emitter five LEDs are on. I tab the emitter to the left to turn the LEDs off and then I tab again and now I'm in preset. Now preset values are one, two, three, four, five on the blue and one, two, three, four, five in, in red. Now if you would look at your guide, uh, there are guides available on the website level as well as um, I guess they are even provided in the box uh, or cheat sheets are provided. Um, the DLP or 120 hertz uh, settings are that I need to have five blue lights and one red light. That is what I need to have and that will set my 120 hertz display. At this point I already have five blue lights but if I didn't, and I will once again nudge and tab the emitter and go down, let's assuming I was at one, and on the red, let's assuming I was at five. Remembering that if I go left to right, I'm increasing the number of LEDs to light, and if I'm going up, I'm increasing the number of red lights that light up. So let's say this is the situation, this is the position that I'm in. Um, Kevin is with me here, Kevin's got his glasses on. Kevin, how's the picture? I've got blue, two blue LEDs and five red LEDs. Uh, absolutely not. Okay, I gathered so, I knew that that wasn't going to be a shoot. Now I'm gently going, which I don't need to, in this case I do know that I need five blue LEDs, but once again, just getting into the habit of you know, one LED at a time, I slide the emitter left and right, and I've got five LEDs. So at this point, the image is a bit better, and um, 
let me have a quick look as well here. Yeah, it is, it is, you know, it's a good image. However, I know that I will get a better image because of, you know, days and days and months and months of testing on these different devices. We know that at five blue and one red, we're going to get the best setting. So I'm going to take the emitter and I am going to use my finger and bring it down by tapping it down and I brought it down to one red as you can see it is one red and here I have a very good image now just to make sure that I've got the absolute correct image i.e. not only that my image is sharp crisp there's no ghosting no color distortion whatsoever but beyond that, that my foreground and background and the middle ground, all of them are properly aligned, I am going to go to my glasses and I'm going to take the on and off button. I'm going to press the on and off button once, gently and release it, to see if I have the right polarity setup, which I did because right now when I'm looking at it, I am not seeing as good a depth as I did before and it's really looking a bit more... You know, uh, rather unique. It's it just seems as if the picture is distorted. You know, the front and background are you know submerged together, and I'm not really seeing a cut, uh, clear image. One other way to uh, to notice that would be is like your, your eyes are starting to strain. You feel a little strain on your eyes. That is telling you that this is not a good viewing. So I'm going to press it one more time. My power button, uh, the on and off button on my glasses. I'm just going to press and release. And bravo. What I see now is a very good image, very clear image. I know my background, the foreground, you know, the other images are also all, you know, in different layers. It's, you know, the best way to describe it is that there are multiple layers or canvases that are being put together. So this is a fantastic image. And that is all you need to do for 120 hertz. This basically is all what needs to happen in order for you to set up. Uh, any interference that you see uh, is just because the glasses have been put right in front of the lamp.